love pussy. <laughs> Oh, I'm joking. What is going on guys? Welcome back to Time Out. Today, we're gonna be doing something pretty cool on the Grom. If you guys have not seen this trick before, you're gonna be quite interested, I think. So just the other day, I ordered some new tires for the Grom. Unfortunately, we're under a little bit of a quarantine, complete shutdown, and uh, we were trying to figure out how we were gonna get the tires onto the bike. And then Doug reminded me of a trick that I have not heard of in a few years. Honestly, I haven't thought about it in a long time, but it's actually gonna come in handy, I think, I hope. So the idea is that on a tire, the most difficult part about mounting it is the fact that you've got to get this uh, bead right here over the lip of the wheel and it's usually pretty difficult but hopefully we'll be able to show you guys a quick little trick about how to get these mounted and not have to go to a tire shop or use a tire machine or pay expensive mounting costs or anything like that the only downside about this trick is that you don't have a tire balancer I'm sure it's your house so your wheels and tires won't be able to be balanced but fortunately on these little bikes like this Grom here none of the wheels and tires get balanced anyways so in this case it's really irrelevant doesn't matter at all and so I was sitting here looking at the bike the other day and after we got done doing the mods which by the way if you guys have not seen the video where we did a bunch of mods to this thing you can click up above and go check it out but essentially we did um, handlebars levers grips and exhaust we wrapped the uh, the forks we deleted the turn signals up front we did a fender eliminator in the back and so the last thing really that I wanted to do to the bike <laughs> was get these things put on kind of retro looking I personally have not seen a Grom that has had white walls but you can kind of get the idea I really really do think it's gonna look a whole lot better with that being said I guess let's dive into getting our front and rear wheel. Let's dive into getting our front and rear rear. Let's dive into getting our front and rear wheel off of our Honda Grom and try this trick out. So to take these back wheels off, it's pretty simple. Don't forget, guys, whenever you put your rear nut back on, torque it back down. On this bike, it really doesn't matter that much, but on traditional bikes, it's pretty important. So now we can wiggle it around, get our rear axle out. Once that's out of the way, our chain adjusters will come out as well. And we can push the wheel up a little bit and work our chain off of our rear sprocket. And so on these Groms, on one side, you've got this little uh, directional spacer, which is important you remember which side it goes on. They are little rubber pieces and being that this bike doesn't have a lot of miles these don't have pretty much any abuse on them by any means but typically on older bikes you'll want to replace these because you'll get a lot of slack in the drivetrain and the reason why is because this is pretty much the dampener between the sprocket and the wheel without these in there your wheel can basically shift a little bit back and forth and just creates a lot of vibrations and stuff like that and a lot of slack so but anyways we're going to pull our valve stem core out of here and once we get the core pulled out it's going to release all of the air in the tire the tire air always smells the best it really is weird smelling I don't understand how air on a tire smells so much different than air outside, but ugh. It's got rubber. All of the air is out of our tire, but this is the difficult part. And this is something that, honestly, this is more of an experiment than anything because this is a trick that I have heard of and I've tried one time uh, and it was doing a dirt bike tire. So I'm not sure how it's going to compare to this, but we're going to give it a shot anyways. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to be the easiest. Doug's got our tire tool and we can pretty much go in by hand and shove it down <clears throat> while he does that. That's what we think well, yeah, that's what we think. <laughs> and we can be able to break the bead, hopefully. No, let's see if we can squeeze our bead off. Sure enough. <laughs> Check that out. Yeah, look, there it goes. Got it off now. Yep. Our tire bead is completely broken loose on one side. So we put some cardboard back here behind the wheel now. And now we'll just press the tire bead off of this side. There we go. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You know what we didn't do? We didn't do a fat, fat Bernie do before we ripped this thing off. Fat Bernie do. So this is what I was thinking. If we wrapped yeah. the shit out of that with electrical tape, the tire iron that we've got <laughs> is a Harbor Freight tire iron. And the reason why is because we wanted to go pretty much as budget as possible for this. This is gonna be, like I said, this is for people to do at home. We're using at home tools only. Hopefully most people have a vice. I think most people have a vice. If you've got a motorcycle, hopefully you've probably got access to a vice. People have vices, right? Yeah, I was about to say, I got a vice. <laughs> I think everybody I know has a vice. Mine is margaritas. Jesus Christ. I was, I, I'm ashamed at how long it took me to get that, honestly. <laughs> so now we're wrapping the bottom portion of our tire iron here. That way, our margarita can't get to it. That's right. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need more than one. Oh, my lord. What? Our fucking tape didn't work worth a fuck. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Fuck. While Doug is looking at a way that we can make that work, I'm gonna look over here at our chain and see if I can find a master link. I doubt this chain has ever been replaced, honestly, with the mileage. It's probably fair to just assume that it has not been replaced before. So I've got our chain breaker tool here. Break a link off of this chain, split it open, and we'll punch our new chain in. Well, not punch it in, but we'll push it in. I don't know why I'm punching chains. Like I told you guys, this, we're doing this for y'all. Yeah. We're doing this for <laughs> DIY purposes, just to show 
that you don't have Even to under quarantine, <laughs> you can get your tires mounted. <laughs> Make sure you get it in there. Yep. Oh, that's what she said. What's up, dude? This looks interesting. It's interesting. Uh, Indeed. To say the least, yeah. Oh, looky there. We're almost there now. <laughs> did anybody hear that? I did. Oh, I can smell it too. Nice. Oh, that wasn't the tire? Nope, that was Doug's asshole. That was not the tire, unfortunately. <laughs> There we go, one bead. Now this part's easy. Literally one spot, so you'll see Doug's gonna pull. You can pretty much do these by hand normally. This part's easy. It usually is, actually. Yeah, yeah this is about the <clears throat> hardest one I've ever had to fuck with. Yeah, same. Eventually. Oh. Uh. Woo! Just need a little bit of lube. We got a little nick there, little nick there, there, <laughs> there, there. Let's be, let's be fair though, these are painted wheels, not powder that? coated. Oh, that'll sharpie, yeah. that'll sharpie out. That's probably gonna work so well. Yeah, that stuff smells good. It does, doesn't it? Oh, that smells good, but my water burger doesn't, jeez. Almost. See, these are difficult for some reason. Normally, yeah. you can just do exactly what Doug did, and that thing would have there we go. Would have popped on. I really hope it didn't just break my fingernail off. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> the tire came down, it was right between there, and I was just like, ow. Oh, man. <laughs> Woo! All right. Bing, bang, boom. Bada, bop, boom, pow. Oh! Do a fixie do real quick. Oh, yeah. Cosmetic mods. It actually didn't look, it doesn't look that bad. I expected it to be much worse when we started this, to be honest. I didn't have faith in this process, but <laughs> it's working. I mean, the highest quality mods here is just the Hey, I was expecting this to go way worse than it did. I've literally seen tire shops do worse. Doug just broke the master link off of the chain. Push it out now. Once we get that pushed out, we've got to pull the nasty, rusty chain through. Yep, it was definitely time for that thing to go. Ah. All right, we can put our cush drives back in. It's been a while since I've changed motorcycle chains. Back in my day, <laughs> I used to do this all the time, but it's been a while. Fuck. Fuck. Doug is upset. I actually have an Uncle Doug. Do you? I do. My mom's brother. Shout out Uncle Doug. Now this is the part if you want to talk about stuff that pisses me off. This is one of them that does. I'm trying to fit the rear wheel back in and sandwich everything in at the same time. There we go. And so now I'll go ahead and put our washer and nut on just to hold it in place so it doesn't accidentally slip out because that will piss you off too. Have you seen that Rob is in a Facebook group called a group where we pretend to work at Chernobyl? No. <laughs> that definitely sounds like a Facebook group that Rob would be in though. All right, now we got the chain on so I can pull the chain adjusters and start tightening these up. What you want to do is get it to where you've still got a good bit of play in your chain right there, just not too, too much. Nothing overly excessive. I normally say about an inch to inch and a half and that's actually right here. Inch and three eighths. Inch and three eighths free play. And then you want to make sure that you are matching on both sides and luckily this bike, which a lot of bikes do not have, these little markings here. So that way you can line it up real nice. Yeah. Yep. After a little bit of fighting, we got the front wheel done too. And check it out. I actually think it looks pretty good. Kind of curious. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Personally, I think the white wall set it off pretty nice. I think the next thing that I want to do to this thing is uh, take off these rear sets right here. I want to get them powder coated black. And once we do those black, I think we're going to be done. I think it's going to be pretty nice. So there you guys go. Hopefully that was a quick little tutorial about how to mount tires at home. Kind of primitive, but like I said, we're under quarantine. We don't really have another way to get tires mounted. So if it works, we're going to share it with you guys and it turns out that it actually works a lot easier than you think. You can definitely mount motorcycle tires at home, no problem. As long as you've got a vice, it's easy, easy, easy. So anyways, let me go get some gear on. We're gonna go take this thing for a ride. Bye. First off, yes, I know, I am riding in only a uh, t-shirt and gloves, but you guys should be proud of me. I found my gloves. Anyways, uh, today is weird because I just found out that a good friend of mine, I'm sure you guys maybe know him on YouTube as Demonology, uh, he just found out that he's got coronavirus, which is really interesting. Um, he is the first person that I know personally that has gotten coronavirus. Uh, I don't even know anybody that knows anybody that's gotten it. 
this thing these clutch springs so bad i don't even really know what to say that just is absolutely incredible herman if you're watching this my prayers go out to you for sure man i cannot wait honestly to see how this goes for you i know that you are a super strong guy so i've got my faith in you for sure if anybody that i know were to get it and make it through it it would uh definitely be you for sure so if you guys aren't familiar with his channel you can click up above right now and go check it out or check out his video but he made a little video basically where he was sitting in the hospital and basically gave like an update of how he got it things like that and it's pretty crazy i think it's even more wild that he was kind of upset i could tell in the video talking about how everything is opening back up in the middle of people like him still getting corona and they've made a lot of developments and figuring out that even young people are starting to show up as asymptomatic which is kind of interesting because asymptomatic basically means where you don't you just you don't show symptoms you're a carrier of the virus you can spread the virus but you don't show symptoms of any kind the family member that he believes that he got it from was asymptomatic they're younger uh, apparently i guess and we're not showing any symptoms of it but ended up finding out that they had it which is pretty crazy and really unfortunate so i'm not trying to be that guy but i do want to remind you guys that even with everything opening up right now it's still very 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 important make sure that you guys have a mask make sure you practice social distancing just because everything's opening back up please do not just like rush out in public to go do whatever without mask and protection it's not any less serious just because things are opening back up it's more of a thing of what is the government supposed to do i think that's like the most interesting thing to me is if the government shuts down for another what i mean a month what's going to happen i mean we've already seen the horrible repercussions of this crap and that is with the, the shutdown of only what i mean a month and a half two months three months sometimes in some states i mean that is not that long <laughs> now imagine if that continued i can't expect it to get any better they've got to figure something out which it's just an unfortunate situation because everybody i mean pandemiologists i think is the name of the people that study pandemics they say that normally what happens is they've got like a second wave that comes directly after stuff like this happens in pandemics because the City opens back up and things like what you see right now around me is what happens everybody starts going everywhere demonology was talking about how down the road a restaurant that he had uh, down the road was like completely packed because they were just opening back up and there's so many people there and a line out in the road and all kinds of stuff of all these people who are just wanting to go eat places again which I mean yeah I understand it sucks if you think it's bad to social distance yourself and not be able to go in restaurants <laughs> look at demonology now he's literally sitting in a hospital bed can't leave the hospital room which is crazy so I do just want to remind you guys that corona is uh an interesting virus to say the least i'm not sure what direction this is even going to go but i do want to remind you guys to be careful don't be stupid it's a lot i think a lot of people are taking it a lot less serious than it needs to be taken i mean i'm just as happy that things are opening back up here but that doesn't mean that i'm going to be reckless by any means or at least try to be <laughs> sorry for the weird second half of this video i know this is kind of a little different mood than the first half was but honestly i feel like youtube is like my diary almost as weird as that might sound that's what this channel is pretty much for is just like everything that i do throughout my day that I, I don't have to act like i'm on a script and talking or whatever this is just this is my life that's what this channel is for i guess my mood just kind of took a turn for the worse whenever i found out that he of all people had corona that's just insane anyways back to what i was saying a minute ago i think the government is pretty much just placed into uh, a spot that's pretty much just between a rock and a hard place they don't know exactly what to do because i mean what can they do they can open everything up that's option one they open everything up and businesses stay i mean stay open and stay fluent and whatever and don't go under or they keep everything closed and we lose business i mean and if they open everything back up the problem is that like pandy pan ugh, fucking whatever the fuck it's called pandemiologists i don't know that's what they're predicting is that we're gonna have a second wave based on things that have happened in history history repeats itself and they said that uh this is what typically happens is everything goes back to normal and then they have a second wave that hits really hard and i'm honestly afraid that that is going to happen if people don't take this more serious and if that happens uh, good lord i mean what we saw during this whole first wave is probably nothing compared to what's coming so i'm interested to see how this entire thing pans out see they're going to go one of two ways in my opinion i think they're going to open everything back up there's going to be a lot more deaths i think the spread of this virus is going to go extremely extremely volatile and take off and it's going to be bad but the economy will survive businesses will be open or second alternative is that they're going to open things back up second wave is going to hit real hard and they're going to take it serious and they're going to shut everything back down again but the problem with shutting everything back down again is that when they do that then what i mean all the businesses are going to go bankrupt i can even speak for myself as a multiple small business owner i 
mean, we've actually made a lot of smart decisions uh, as a team, and I'm grateful for the people that I have. And luckily, we've been able to kind of keep a security blanket there for us. But even with everything going on, I mean, it's crazy to see how bad coronavirus is taking a toll on everything. YouTube, for instance, I mean, even YouTube alone, we can go look at revenue. Revenue on the It's Just a Six channel, which is my other channel that I, I run, uh, revenue on that channel has dropped so much, it's almost crazy. Like, we were seeing a 60% revenue drop with similar amount of views. And look, they're setting up these table things outside so that people can go eat outside now, which is weird. But anyways, a lot of small businesses do not have the blanket that I've got where they have just a safety net to survive. And uh, a lot of businesses, especially local businesses that I've seen around here even, I've seen a lot of places completely start boarding up and go bankrupt and completely shut down, which absolutely sucks. Uh, but there's just like, it, <laughs> it's just one of those things where what can you do? And I think that is the, the worst part about it is that this kind of thing is not something that you just have an answer for about how to make it better. Typically with pretty much anything, there's always a solution, right? It's hard whenever there's just like no real solution that's gonna work. It's either open things up and uh, people die or keep things closed and the economy dies. That's a difficult decision to make. <laughs> Lawmakers, politicians, everybody's being judged harshly for the decisions that they're making and I will admit a lot of them are very rash. A lot of them I don't agree with necessarily but you've got to remember that this is not a decision that there's a right or wrong too it's it's just kind of that's why I'm so impartial about this whole entire thing is because what do you what do you do does anybody have a better idea about how to keep people from dying why were you telling me to stop I saw you doofus so like what do you what do you do do you let people die do you let the economy die that's honestly the only the only choice there Jesus Christ I don't know I, I think I'm just mind blown at the, the gravity of the entire thing it's pretty weird my escape from <laughs> the world's problems has been just getting on motorcycles and riding so that and shooting guns probably the last 10 years has been my escape from things is both of those <laughs> anyways but Saw it. Just because I'm curious on you guys' take, what do you think? What would you do if you were in the position of the lawmakers? What would you do right now? Would you be opening up the country? Why does this dude have no shirt on? Would you open up the country? Would you not? I'm just honestly curious of I pers I can't give a right answer. I don't know what the best thing to do is, but I'm curious of what everybody else thinks. And like I said, the two things that are difficult to choose between is the fact that you can either open things up and the virus gets bad or you keep things closed and the economy gets bad, which is the less or poison i don't know both suck pretty damn bad both are pretty catastrophic i will say one thing that sucks pretty bad about everything going on is the fact that we cannot go eat any good food right now can't go eat sushi like i like to they actually do have people at tables sitting outside and they've got waiters coming out in face masks i'm just astounded holy shit almost just fucking <laughs> i've never been in here with a grom but i've passed it so many times <laughs> why not we're in quarantine right kind of <laughs> what we got in here Mustang bitch? <laughs> Did I read that right? Kelly Diamonds bitch no ruby. Done? Nope. Okay, so some people with lower than average uh, English vocabulary came in here. I see. Let's see what else we got. Speaker that snow bitch. Did a class of kindergarten like outlaws come in here or something? Is this their names? Speaker that snow bitch? Oh, motherfuck. Nice. Oh, wow. A lot more graffiti has came up in here since the last time that I was in here. <laughs> Am I reading that right? <laughs> Bitch, Bundy, Pussy, over, you, major, my inward facts. Oh, dude, there's an alien there. Check that out. That's pretty dope. <laughs> the classic, you know what the fuck going on. All right, what else we got? My lane, stock that i don't even know what that means ballin still a bitch gold stang i can't understand any of this herd bitch mondi road ton of nada what does that mean ton of nada how does that even make fucking sense oh chavez has been in here that's pretty dope what's up chavez funny enough this is actually where we filmed the beginning of uh Wait, what does that one say? Oh, done. Nope. I already saw that one. This is where we filmed the beginning of our Tintos Down song. I've ridden a Grom through it, though. <laughs> Just riding anywhere. This is like this abandoned factory that we've got here. Security cameras in use. Yeah, right. <laughs> there is literally not a camera anywhere around here. Don't ask me how I know. There's a lot of nice graffiti back here, too. Let's go check this out. Oh, please don't get stuck in the mud. Oh, fuck. No justice, no peace. Bombing for peace. Wow. That's dark. That's not how that works. Lewis like fucking for virginity interesting Lewis sounds like a nice guy make love not bullets 
fuck you, dude. <laughs> I use bullets for a lot of fun shit. Love pussy. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Drop acid, not bombs. Well, that's weird because this person said bombing for peace. You saying drop acid, not bombs. What the hell? Security cameras in use. Really, that's odd because I surely don't see any of those security cameras. But it does look like they got power up here. For some reason, that's a new power pole. Oh, look, there is a deer camera. Hello. I guess that's their security cameras. There's a deer camera that takes a picture of whoever's here. That's pretty funny. No, oh, what we got in here? What we got in here? Oh, we got some toilet paper. Nice. Somebody pulled up that screen so they can get in here. I don't think I personally would want to get in there, but all right. I'm not even going to go look in there, to be honest. I don't have my pistol on me, and I'm, for some reason, oddly worried that there may be a homeless person here who likes my grom more than I do, which, by the way, I like it a lot. See? Oh, I wonder if I can go up this and then come all the way back down while holding. Holding straight. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, I changed my mind. That's a really fucking stupid idea. So crazy enough, let me show you guys something. Let me let this car pass first. This is a real road in our town. Watch this car right here. We're going to watch them come down. Look at this. They're literally angled. Look at the decline here. That was a stock SUV. Holy, holy crap, dude. I could probably wheelie this thing. Oh, I can. What the just by giving i can power up on this thing it's so steep oh damn damn it yeah see the younger bad kid in me really just wants to fucking oh i'm just gonna look i'm not gonna do it totally not gonna do it totally not gonna do it but oh, god damn it should i do it that looks so fun nah i shouldn't do it i really shouldn't do it that'd be bad no 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 oh fuck dude <laughs> Anyways, that looks really fun to ride down. I wonder what people think whenever they just see a grown ass dude on a bike that looks like it was made for a five year old girl. Probably think I'm a badass, honestly. Which I am. Check this out, sir. Yes, sir, what'd you think? He said it sounded good. Oh, see, I could have come out right there. Damn, I should have done it. That would have been fun. I'm gonna go ride down here. I'm gonna take a ride. Please don't rear-end me, anybody. I swear on a Grom, you've got to constantly be aware that you're probably going to get rear-ended at some point. And it's just all about figuring out when you're going to get rear-ended. So I always, every time I go to slow down, I just turn around. Honestly, I had no idea that we had a military museum here, but apparently we got a military museum and uh, we've got a fighter jet, got some tanks. Dude, that looks sick. Oh, I definitely want a tank. Do you know that uh, if you were to de disarm or whatever the hell, I can't remember the actual fucking term, but you take you take the tank and you basically make it to where it can't shoot shit anymore you take the firing mechanism on it out and you can buy a tank like as a normal citizen and just ride that thing around like it's an, a, a normal vehicle you just go get it titled insured registered all that good stuff and you can literally just drive that thing around saving up for a tank so almost there i bought a grom instead but wiped out almost all of my tank saving funds but we're starting over all right here we go here we go here we go i'm gonna do a dank wheelie right here God damn it, I look like a fucking tool. Uh, if this, the guy that I just passed is watching this right now, please know that I really was just not trying to show off my Grom to you. I promise you probably don't even care. I wouldn't care if I saw somebody with a Grom ride by, especially attempt a wheelie and pull like a foot off of the ground. That was just pathetic. Oh, why is the gate to the childhood center open, but nobody is here? Dang, dude, this is like, believe it or not, the perfect stunt lot. Oh, I know where we're at. Whoa, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Whoa, dude. <laughs> Holy fuck. Whoa, dude! The post office is right here to the left, dude. Wow, I had no idea that this is where this is where this road went. Ugh, let's get some let's get some sidewalk action going. Let's see. Yeah, we can merge on now. So I'm banned from that place. That's a fun story, actually. Oh, that would be such a dope story time. Yep, I'm writing that down. Daniel, if you're watching this, put that shit in Trello. Andrew, did you ever one of y'all? that shit in trello son i'm making a story time about how i got banned from enterprise who is that that girl looked really excited to see me i'm who are you who, who are you why are you why are you excited as fuck to see me passing by i think she was like oh my god it's a grom <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> yeah that's right it's a, it's a fucking grom hell yeah either that or they were laughing at how fucking stupid i look passing down the road i don't know well there they were and they just passed laughing so <laughs> i'll take it with the latter option i figure that they were probably laughing at me not looking at me like wow that dude looks so fucking cool on that thing but if there was a grom that somebody would say damn that dude looks so fucking cool on that thing it would be this one the white wall tires man that's where it's at that is all for my daily ride i guess got a bunch of stuff accomplished honestly i'm pretty proud everything opened back up so things are kind of normal 
businesses are answering emails finally so we're actually making progress on a few things and by the way guys before we go if you did not already know we are giving away a 2006 dodge viper right now on my other channel if you want to get entered in to win that thing it's actually pretty simple we've got a website that we sell merch and kind of just to show our thanks to those people that support us and buy merch and whatever we do like a giveaway every two months or so and we give away cars i i don't i, I think the reason why i really like doing this is just because i never in a million years would have expected to have a merchandise brand that it performs as well as it does and allows me to have the ability to be able to even afford a dodge viper much less give one away that is super super cool for sure uh so if you guys want to go get entered in to win that thing it is right here i'll show you i saw it yeah check that bitch out mm. That bitch not. So anyways, if you guys want to go get an internet and win that thing, you can go to it's just six.com right now. And every $10 that you spend on the site is going to get you one automatic entry and win that. <laughs> Drag racing the bike. All right. Tires are hot. <laughs> Let's launch it. Record!